I've been a music teacher really for um, the first part of my career, if I can put it that way, after I studied uh, BMAS at the University of Stellenbosch. Then while I was teaching um, in 1984, I received a strong call from God that he wanted me in the ministry. Um, so in 1993 that happened and I was in what they call full-time ministry for like 20 years yes. and in that time, um, in 2010, around about that time, beginning of 2010, I experienced um, kind of in myself a sort of dryness, a kind of barrenness uh, in my soul, in my spirit, where I just knew that there's something desperately wrong here. They, they, we're pursuing something, but we should be pursuing much more and much deeper. This is God that we're meant to pursue here. And the depths of everything that He wants to reveal to us about Himself. Um, and somehow we are swimming in the shallow waters and he wants us to come deeper into his river to the place where we actually lose control and just go with his anointing and with his flow and I knew that I wasn't there I knew the church wasn't there and um, I was desperate I just couldn't go on like this I just couldn't go on um, in the shallow waters I desperately wanted that depth and I tried everything. I read scripture more, I worshipped more, I um, prayed more, but nothing seemed to materialize in my life. Until the Lord challenged me and said to me, would you be willing to enter into the fellowship of my suffering? for that higher call, that higher thing that you are so desperately seeking. And I said, yes, I'm desperate enough. And then I even preached a sermon around that. It was in February of 2010 that I preached a sermon called Identification, where I realized that when God says that we must take up our cross and follow him, it means literally going to the cross as Jesus did through the whole process, Gethsemane, being abandoned by all his disciples, going to the cross, coming to the place where we feel even abandoned by God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And, um, and so... I preached the sermon about identification. At the end of this, I prayed a prayer that went something like this, God, I'm so desperate for more of you that I'm willing to give up everything that I am, that I have, the ministry, my name, my reputation, the people I love. I'm willing to give it all if I could just gain a deeper understanding of who you are. And then... <laughs> Two years later, precisely what I gave up to God in that prayer happened. And um, <laughs> all those things were taken away from me very suddenly at the end of 2012. And I went through a time of absolute hell, which the Bible has a better way of describing in Psalm 23 where it says, the valley of the shadow of death. Some people call it the dark night of the soul. This lasted about five years. During this five-year period, um, the Lord spoke to me and said to me, I want you to throw out everything you think you know about me, about the kingdom of God, about the way that you interpret scripture, about church life, about Christianity, everything that you've been taught, throw out the lot. I want to rebuild you and um, 
give you a greater and deeper understanding of who I am. And so I threw out everything. Um, I gave everything up, even the way that I interpret scripture. In fact, I moved away from reading scripture, um, which might sound like, wow. But I know it was God who wanted to somehow just detox me of the old ways of thinking. So by the time I went back to scripture, my approach was completely different. My approach was not to just read scripture, it was to know God. What does he say about himself in scripture? And so I discovered things that I never saw before. I read things that I interpreted in a particular way and things that were interpreted for me by the church, which one just accepts because everybody says this is what this means. But God showed me different things by his spirit because now it was just me and God and his spirit and the scripture and he showed me such such depth in so many verses that I missed in the past and he took me into a deeper knowledge of who he is and why he said certain things in scripture and that is just so blessed to read to read scripture in such a different way During that time, I also resigned. I went right back to teaching, and this is where I am right now. I'm busy again teaching music classes, but in this time, I'm praying because the Lord has showed me really the blueprint of what He wants church to be. And um, I'm not going to share that because He hasn't released me to share that. I do trust that He will, in His own time. Uh, release me to do that. I know there are many people who since that time of transition that the Lord is busy with in the church, some churches are even going into a new direction. Some people are leaving church altogether because they're upset with the structure. Um, so there's a kind of a time of upheaval and shaking going on at the moment. But I believe that the Lord has given me some insight into what He's, or rather, where he's moving to with the bride of Christ. Because he is wanting to bring us to that place where he can come and fetch us. Where we are without spot or wrinkle. And there's at the moment still lots of wrinkles, lots of spots, which the Lord would like to erase. Um, and so, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm praying about at the moment. I'm teaching my music lessons and I'm praying seriously, sincerely, that the Lord will do what he has shown me. I'm praying specifically where I see certain things. I'm praying with my, by myself and I'm praying with friends because I know that for this country to come to its full potential and its full calling, it starts in the church. And so God wants to restore the church to its fullness and the beauty that he has planned for it. I could give you one little hint. It will be built on real love relationships. Love relationships will be first before any kind of structure to keep this tree in place.